Hey there, I'm Ben. I'm a developer relations engineer, and later on in the talk, I'll be joined by Dustin. Let's jump right in. Kotlin Multiplatform, or KMP for short, is a feature of Kotlin that allows you to share your Kotlin code across multiple platforms. KMP brings native performance. There is no virtual machine layer between your code and the native platform. It's compiling down into native code. You can adopt KMP at a pace that makes sense for your app. You don't have to go all in like some other multi-platform frameworks and do a full rewrite. KMP is also stable, and it's already in use by apps both big and small shipping on the Play Store. One of those apps is our very own Google Docs. The Workspace apps started experimenting with KMP last year, and now Google Docs is running KMP in production on both iOS and web. The runtime performance is on par, and in some cases, it's even better than the non-KMP version. Next, they intend to expand KMP to other workspace applications. And Stoneco, a leading provider of financial technology solutions in Brazil, told us they are currently sharing approximately 55% of their code, and they're moving 40% faster thanks to KMP. Traditionally, building native apps requires a lot of duplication of code across platforms. KMP allows you to write once and run almost anywhere. A recommended approach with KMP is to use it to share business logic across various platforms. Think domain layer code, data models, network layers, things like that. On the Android team, we love KMP. Android thrives when we have a strong ecosystem when you can create apps that delight users, create businesses that are profitable, and create professionals with successful careers. And KMP, it checks all those boxes through smooth native interop, reduced time to market, and transferable skills. So what are we doing for KMP? Let's start with Jetpack. Are we just gonna KMPify everything? Well, hang on, not so fast. Jetpack has over 800 modules, and not every library makes sense in a KMP world. So we started by clearly defining our levels of support for each platform that KMP supports. We classify the platforms into three tiers. Our main focus is mobile development. So our highest level of support is for Android, iOS, and JVM targets. This allows you to share code that uses Jetpack libraries, across your mobile apps and your Kotlin backend. Tier two is currently desktop support for Mac and Linux. Tier three, that's all the other KMP platforms. The levels of support in each tier are as follows. Tier one, our highest level of support. It's fully tested in CI and comes with strict binary compatibility guarantees. Tier two, it comes with limited testing with host side tests but no binary compatibility guarantees. And tier three, we ensure we don't use any APIs during development that would block usage on those platforms, but we provide no support. As well as the platforms, we classify the libraries into the types of features and guarantees we provide. Stable libraries bring both binary compatibility and easy integration on tier one platforms. Commonized libraries mean the API is stable so you get the binary compatibility guarantees, but we aren't planning to build platform specific hooks. You might have to do some manual integration yourself. And Alpha, Alpha hasn't changed when it comes to Jetpack. The API is under development and the features are subject to change. With that, we've been moving slow and steady, adding support for KMP to multiple Jetpack libraries where we think it makes sense. We first started with Room, Data Store, and Collections which are now available in a stable release. We've also commonized paging, and we've released alpha versions of save state and view model. Our KMP support isn't just limited to Jetpack libraries though. As part of making KMP work at Google's scale, we've been contributing back to KMP through the Kotlin Foundation. We've upgraded the Kotlin native compiler to take advantage of the latest features of LLVM 16. We've implemented a more efficient garbage collector and string representation for Kotlin Native that brings both improvements to runtime performance and memory footprint. We're bringing support for Android Lint to Kotlin targets 
which will allow for static analysis of KMP code. We've also contributed to binary compatibility tracking and unifying the API of AGP and KGP to improve the developer experience of KMP and Gradle. It doesn't stop there. We are also adding tooling support. The latest versions of Android Studio include two new templates to help you get started. You can start a whole new KMP app with the new project template, or add a KMP shared module to your existing app to begin sharing its code to other platforms. Running this template and having a look at the Gradle file your new module shows a few sections you may not have seen before in a traditional Android Gradle setup. Targets, source sets, dependencies, well, to dive into what all of that means, I'll now hand over to Dustin. So Ben just showed us a lot of code. Let's take a step back and look at a typical project from a high-level overview. Here's a diagram of an Android application built with Gradle. As a review, a Gradle project can contain multiple sub-projects called modules. In general, it's best practice to modularize your app this way. Besides organizational reasons, this can also have practical effects like improving your build speeds. Each module is configured in Gradle with a set of plugins. And because this only builds for one target, you can directly configure how it builds on Android, including declaring things like dependencies. Now, in a KMP context, it's very similar, but with a few key differences. As before, it's configured using plugins. But for KMP, we need to also declare what targets we want to compile to and how we want to organize our sources to share code between these targets. Let's take a closer look at configuring each step. An Android library is configured with the Android Gradle plugin and the Kotlin Gradle plugin, each with its own DSL. To convert this to KMP, we need to use the KMP versions of these plugins, which provides a unified Gradle DSL to configure the build. Of course, the whole point of KMP is to compile to multiple platforms. This is configured in the build by declaring targets. Each target de defines an artifact to build and what platform it's compiled for. It's important to note that targets may be arbitrarily defined, including creating multiple for the same platform by giving them custom names, although this is really not a recommended approach. On the other hand, platforms are defined by the tool chain. They represent a very specific place where your code runs and directly maps to what kind of binary the Kotlin compiler should spit out. To give you an idea of how specific these are, there's an example here for a 64-bit iOS simulator that's running on Apple Silicon. Continuing with our example from before, here's the configuration for an Android library through the Android Gradle plugin. Converting this to KMP looks very similar, but Android configuration is now encapsulated under the Android library target in the Kotlin DSL. Declaring other targets is very similar. Below Android library, we have a declaration for a 64-bit iOS target, which comes with its own set of configuration options. As I mentioned earlier, it is possible to declare multiple targets for the same platform by giving them a custom name. This is likely something you will never need to do, and it's really not a recommended approach. But it's a useful example to illustrate the difference between a target and a platform in a KMP project. Source sets in a KMP project define how sources are shared between targets. By default, each target creates a matching main and test source set, which are only compiled to that target. Each source set can declare dependencies, including on other source sets, which is how you configure what sources are shared. Similar to targets, source sets can be created arbitrarily with whatever name you want. Back to our example, but with the default target specific source sets configured. We can add dependencies for each source set in their corresponding blocks. In order to share sources between these targets, we can create a new custom source set, let's call it Android and iOS, marking both targets dependent on this new one. If the dependencies are also commonized, we can also move them into this new shared source set as well. It turns out that sharing sources this way is a common pattern. So the Kotlin Cradle plugin creates shared source sets for you by default. Pictured here is the dependency tree of shared source sets that are configured for you, with source sets used to compile to iOS highlighted. As an example, iOS, as its name suggests, is for shared sources across all iOS targets, and common is the root source set that is shared across all declared targets. 
Applying this to our example, we no longer need to manually create a custom source set. We can just leverage the existing common main, which everything else depends on, out of the box. Unique to the Android target, there are two test source sets. One for host side tests that run directly on your computer in the JVM, and another for instrumented device tests that run on an Android device or emulator. A note about common. As I mentioned earlier, it is just a default source set. This means there's no such thing as a common target. There is no special common platform that Kotlin code is supposed to compile to. In fact, the compiler only checks your common code for compatibility against declared targets. So it's possible to write common code that isn't truly commonized across all possible targets if you've only declared a subset of them to compile to. So that's a wrap on project configuration. If your entire app is built locally as a single Gradle project, then you're finished. Project dependencies work as normal in Gradle, and your app can build and compile normal. Of course, the whole point of Kotlin multi-platform is that it's multi-platform. To share our business logic with other apps, we'll need to look into how publishing and exporting works. KMP supports publishing libraries in several different binary formats. For Android and iOS, we care about these three, Java archives and Android archives. In this case, nothing has changed. You can consume them in Gradle and use them just as before. Calebs are a new archive format introduced by Colin for non-Android and non-JVM targets, such as the Colin native target for iOS. XE Frameworks is Apple's officially supported binary format for libraries on Apple platforms. KMP also supports exporting these for a seamless developer experience for Apple platform developers. Publishing for consumption by other KMP projects through Gradle can be configured with the Maven Publish Gradle plugin. A KMP library produces a separate artifact for each target, with the target's name appended as a suffix to the library's name. A root publication is also created, which includes metadata that allows Gradle to resolve the correct platform-specific artifact. Very similar to a pre-KMP world, things work pretty much as you would expect. At this point, if your entire project is built in Gradle with KMP, then you're done. Of course, one of the advantages of KMP is its ability to integrate with native iOS development in Xcode. So let's explore how that works next. I mentioned earlier that KMP can produce XC frameworks for Apple platforms. This is something that must be explicitly enabled by configuring the target with the binaries framework option in Gradle as shown here. For local experimentation, you can directly integrate Gradle into Xcode by adding a run script into your project's build phases. The Kotlin Gradle plugin provides a Gradle task that builds the XC framework and imports it into your Xcode project when you run it this way. While this method is great for quickly experimenting locally, it's really not the recommended approach. In the real world, many teams will have dedicated iOS engineers that shouldn't need to interact with Gradle or Kotlin directly. In this case, you'll want to make your KMP library available to Xcode projects through a package manager. We'll walk through two of the most popular ones, Swift Package Manager and CocoaPods. Swift Package Manager is Apple's officially supported method of distributing binary packages, such as XE frameworks for Xcode projects. For a new project, this is the best choice for aligning with modern best practices, and a Swift package for a KMP library can be built directly with official tooling. To publish a KMP library as a Swift package, you'll need to assemble the XE framework through Gradle with the task shown here, compress it as a zip file, and then upload it along with a package manifest to a remote repository that's visible to your iOS engineers. Here's an example of a Swift package manifest. Essentially, it just contains a whole bunch of metadata, some of it which is required, but also I want to draw your attention below to a URL to download your archive and a checksum for verifying this archive, which can be generated with a Swift package command line interface. Adding a Swift package to an Xcode project is the same as a regular flow without KMP. This is all done through the native UI in Xcode, which is not only seamless with existing workflows, but also means iOS engineers do not need to open up Gradle, Android Studio, or Kotlin Codebase. Another option is CocoaPods. This is a popular third-party dependency manager that can be a good choice if your iOS team is already using it. 
JetBrains also ships a plugin which provides a Gradle DSL to configure exporting for CocoaPods. To export to CocoaPods, you'll first need to install it. As CocoaPods is built in Ruby, you'll first need to install Ruby and then CocoaPods itself, which is available as a Ruby gem. After configuring CocoaPods in Gradle, a task will be created for you that assembles the XC framework and a pod spec you can upload to a remote repository to make it available to iOS clients. Here's an example of a KMP library configured to export as a CocoaPod. The DSL allows you to specify a bunch of metadata, which is required for the pod spec, but also provides a block to configure assembling the XC framework that is bundled with your pod. After assembling and uploading your pod, importing it into an Xcode project isn't any different as a regular iOS dependency. Simply add your new library to the Xcode project's pod file and run pod install to import your KMP library. Lastly, you can also declare dependencies on other pods in Gradle by declaring repos to search for and what pods your project depends on. That's a wrap on the basics of a KMP build. This talk glosses over many details, but fortunately, there are many resources available online with detailed guidance, including reference documentation and a step-by-step -step code lab. And here we have Ben to talk a little bit more about that. So the easiest way to get started is with the new templates in Android Studio mentioned previously. If you're already in Android Studio, this is the fastest way. We've also got two new code labs released. Getting started with KMP takes you through the project setup of adding a shared module and then using that shared module to share some business logic between your Android and iOS app. Migrating your data layer to Room takes two existing standalone apps, one for Android and one for iOS, and migrates these apps to have a shared implementation. All of our Kotlin documentation, including KMP, lives at Google slash Kotlin. And don't miss the JetBrains KMP documentation. That's it. Thanks for watching. Thank <laughs> you.